Hi everyone. Uh, so welcome to the <coughs> channel Sluggers Blue for your CAD PRC preparation. Uh, this in this particular video we'll be taking up uh, an RC that was asked. Uh, RC is right here that was asked in, your, in the first lot of your CAD 2018 exam. I've titled this RC as uh, Can Happiness Shape Global Economies? 492 words, five questions, quite standard for a CAD RC. Uh, now, uh, before we go into the passage explanation part, uh, you know, I would like to give a very minimal and very brief introduction about the series of videos that you're watching right now. So, so the current session that we have here is uh, has two parts has two parts to it the first part is what you're watching right now right so for every rc there'll be one part where i explain where i take you through the passage where i explain the passage in quite some detail using a schematic and then there's a second part to the session in which we shall be discussing the questions pertaining to the passage okay quite simple and uh, these sessions that you watch here uh 40 such sessions make up a course, which is titled as uh, an anthology of RCs uh, for your reading comprehension preparation for CAT. Uh, so it's a 40 session course and every session we take up one RC. And uh, I've already created a detailed introductory video of so far as this course is concerned. So I'm not gonna go into that right now. Uh, if you want, you can check it out by clicking uh a cue card which should be available to you on your screen on the top right side of the video right here where i'm where, where i'm putting the pointer here so you know it, it, you should be able to see a letter small letter i so if you click on that uh, it will show you uh it will provide you an option to go to the introductory video for this course okay so with that uh, let's uh, jump right into the passage all right okay guys so let's uh, start with the passage discussion okay See, now your screen is divided into two parts. Uh, on, the right, on the left side, you have the passage area where, yeah, we have the passage here now. And on the right side, you have the schematic area. The schematic area is meant uh, to serve as a platform for the diagrams that will appear here. Okay, so as I read each and every paragraph, each and every line of the passage, there'll be some diagrams that will appear here, which are supposed to better help you understand the meaning of every part of the passage. Okay, they are supposed to be a pictorial representation of the passage. Okay, so so and so that's that's about the layout of the screen. Now uh, the way we'll go about this is, I'll read the first paragraph in one go, and parallelly there'll be a series of diagrams that will appear here uh, related to the first paragraph only. And uh, once I'm done reading it, uh, I'll I'll stop, and then I'll go back to the first line of the paragraph. I'll read each and every line of the first paragraph and and parallelly explain each and every diagram of the first paragraph that has already appeared on the screen okay and that's how uh, and, and that's how we'll complete the first para and so on and so forth we'll do the same with the rest of the paragraphs as well okay i hope that's uh, abundantly abundantly clear to everyone so let's start okay economists have spent most of the 20th century ignoring psychology positive or otherwise but today there is a great deal of emphasis on how happiness can shape global economies or on a smaller scale successful business practice this is driven by in part by a trend in measuring positive emotions mostly so they can be optimized neuroscientists for example claim to be able to locate specific emotions such as happiness or disappointment in particular areas of the brain wearable technologies such as fire offer data driven advice on how to reduce stress okay so i've just read the first paragraph and then this schematic the diagrams we have so far here this relate only to the first paragraph of the passage okay so let, let me now explain each and every part of this to you one by one i'll go through the first line Econom economists have spent most of the 20th century ignoring psychology. So yes, economists have spent most of the 20th century ignoring, not equal to stands for ignoring, this is a symbol for psychology, positive or otherwise, like, like irrespective of whether it is positive psychology or negative psychology or any other, any other kind of psychology, irrespective of that, economists, economists have majorly ignored psychology for most of the 20th century. That's what he means to say in the first sentence. Okay, so second one, but today, there is a great deal of emphasis on how happiness 
But today there is a great deal of emphasis on how happiness, this is gingerbread icon, that gingerbread icon that you have here represents happiness for us. Okay. On how happiness can shape uh, the global economies or on smaller scales, on a larger scale, global economies and on smaller scales, basically successful business practice. Okay. I hope that's clear. This is driven. What is driven? This idea that happiness can shape global economies and successful business practice. This idea is driven by, is driven in part by a trend, is driven in part by a trend. And what is the trend? What is the trend? By a trend in measuring positive emotions, by a trend, see, I, I told you that uh, this, this represents, this gingerbread icon represents happiness or positive emotions for us, right? So, so by measuring, this, is a, this, this, is a, this uh, icon represents a scale, by measuring your positive emotions, mostly, and why do, why do you measure them? So that they can be optimized, this, so that they can be optimized. And after this, after this line, guys, after this uh, first couple of, first two, uh, three sentences, he essentially, the rest of the part, starting from neuroscientists until produce stress, this part is just uh, where the author has given specifics and related to the ideas that he has described here. Okay, that's why I've just uh, encapsulated, uh, I've covered that in just uh, this, this, subtitle, this title, that specifics and substantiating instances have been provided here, which are neuroscientists, for example, claim to be able to locate specific emotions such as happiness or disappointment, in particular areas of the brain, you can see that this is uh, this, this this is this basically is just an example of this measuring idea, right? And variable technology such as uh, Spire offer data-driven advice on how to reduce stress, right? So I hope that that's the I hope that the first paragraph is clear. Now let's move on to the second one. So we are no longer just dealing with happiness in a philosophical or romantic sense. It has become something that can be monitored and measured by including by our behavior, use of social media and bodily indicators such as pulse rate and facial expressions. Okay. So I've read the second paragraph. Now I'll explain the same to you. It says we are no longer just dealing with happiness in a philosophical and romantic sense. We are not, we are no longer dealing with happiness in just within this box. It, it has gotten outside of this box. We are no longer dealing with happiness in just a philosophical or romantic sense. Okay. It has changed now. This is the uh, symbol that we use for change or conversion. Okay. So it has some, it has become something. So, so, so happiness has now become something, something that can be monitored, right? That can be monitored. This is, this is a, uh, icon for a security cam here that can be monitored and measured and measured okay including and how how can how can it be monitored and measured including by our behavior one by our behavior two by use of social media by use of social media and three by bodily indicators such as pulse rate and facial expressions okay so i hope the second paragraph is also clear to you now let's move on to the third one okay so it says there is nothing automatically sinister about this trend, okay? But it is disquieting that the businesses and experts driving the quantification of happiness claim to have our best interests at heart, often concealing their own agendas in the process. In the workplace, Happy workers are viewed as a win-win. Work becomes more pleasant and employees more productive. But this is now being pursued through the use of performance evaluating variable technology such as human eyes or virgin pulse, both of which monitor physical signs of stress and activity toward the goal of increasing productivity. Okay. So I've read the third paragraph. I'll take you through it line by line. It says, there is nothing automatically sinister about this trend. About what, right? About this trend that he has mentioned here. That uh, how, uh, you know, emotions are being monitored and measured via, uh, he says, behavior, use of social media and bodily indicators. So this, he says that there's nothing automatically sinister about this. Okay. But by itself, there's nothing wrong with this. Doesn't seem, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this by itself. But... But what is disquieting, you know, what is actually problematic or disquieting is that the businesses and experts, that the businesses and experts 
driving the quantification of happiness, who drive the quantification of happiness here, who drive the quantification of happiness here, they claim to have our best interests at heart. They claim that, that they have our best interests at heart, right? Often concealing their own agendas in the process. Often concealing, you can see that their own agenda is concealed here. Often concealing their own agenda in the process, okay? And then he moves on to the next uh, part of the paragraph. He says, in the workplace, in the workplace, happy workers are viewed as a win-win. Happy workers are viewed as a win-win. Work becomes, why, why, why are they viewed as a win-win? Because one, first, the work becomes more pleasant. So the first win for the employee, for the worker, because if the work itself is pleasant and the employees become more productive. So it's a second win for the organization, for the uh, business itself, right? So yeah, they are more productive. But this is now, but this this idea, this this win-win idea of happy employees that is that is uh, brought in uh, because of the employees being happy and more productive. This idea is now being uh, pursued through the use of performance evaluating variable technology. Okay, now this idea is being is pursued by the use of performance evaluating variable technology. Like like see, I, I used uh, we've used symbols symbols like smart watch, smart watch, and etc to give you the uh, idea here that this is now being pursued through the use of performance evaluating variable technology such as human eyes or virgin pulse both of which monitor physical signs of stress now so, so guys after once he mentions the, uh, once he has mentioned the idea that okay this is being pursued by use of performance evaluating variable technology after that he has just given some specifics and substantiating examples here right the, of human eyes and virgin pulse so that's why i've, I've just uh, uh, again, captured that just by this box. I'm not. I've not gone into the details of that. Okay. So, so yeah. So, but this is now being pursued through, through this, uh, such as humanize the virgin pulse, both of which monitor physical science of stress and activity towards the goal of increasing productivity. So that's your third paragraph. Okay. Let's move on to the fourth one now. Cities such as Dubai, which has pledged to become the happiest city in the world dream up ever more elaborate and intrusive ways of collective of collecting data on well-being to the point where there is now talk of cctv cameras to monitor facial expressions in public spaces new ways of detecting emotions are hitting the market all the time one company beyond verbal aims to calculate moods conveyed in a phone conversation potentially without the knowledge of at least one of the aspirants and facebook has demonstrated that it could influence our emotions through tweaking our news feed opening the door to ever more targeted manipulation in advertising and influence okay so that's the fourth paragraph let's let me take you through each and every line of the paragraph it says cities such as dubai cities such as dubai which has pledged to become the happiest city in the world dream up ever more elaborate and intrusive ways of collecting data on well-being to the point where there is now talk of using CCTV cameras to monitor facial expressions in public spaces, right? So he has given one example of Dubai, right? See guys, by, by the way, this paragraph is basically a paragraph of examples. You can see that he has given three different examples of the ideas that he has already talked about in the earlier part of the passage. Then he goes on to give the second example, okay? He says, uh, new ways of detecting emotions are hitting the market all the time. One company named Beyond Verbal uh, aims to calculate moods, aims to calculate moods uh, conveyed in a phone conversation, conveyed in a phone conversation, potentially without the knowledge of at least one of the participants. And Facebook, Facebook has already demonstrated that it could influence our emotions. It could influence our emotions but through tweaking our news feed. This is the symbol for news feed opening the door to ever more targeted manipulation in advertising and influence okay so i hope uh, this paragraph is also clear to you let's move on to the fifth paragraph okay so as the science grows more sophisticated and technologies become more intimate with our thoughts and bodies a clear trend is emerging where happiness indicators were once used as a basis to reform society challenging challenging the obsession with money that gdp measurement entrenches they now are increasingly used as a basis
to transform or discipline individuals okay so that's the fifth paragraph so i'll, I'll explain uh, every line to you he says that as the science grows as more sophisticated as science becomes more and more sophisticated and technologies become more technologies become more intimate with our thoughts and bodies there is a very clear trend that is emerging here okay and what is the trend he says that earlier in earlier times uh, happiness indicators were used as a basis to reform society or as a basis to challenge the obsession with money that you, that gdp measurement usually entrenches right so so earlier the the used or the the, the application of uh, happiness indicators were, were used, used to be some, somewhere on these lines like reforming society challenging uh, obsession with uh, monetary values etc but now but now what has happened is now they they are being increasingly used as a basis to transform or discipline individuals now they are being increasingly used as a basis to transform and discipline individuals okay so that's the fifth paragraph for you let's move on to the sixth one okay so happiness becomes a personal project that each of us must now work on like going to the gym since the 1970s also since the 1970s <coughs> excuse me depression has come to be viewed as a cognitive or neurological defect in the individual and never a consequence of circumstances all of this simply create escalates the sense of responsibility each of us feels for our own feelings and with it the sense of failure when things go badly a society that deliberately removed certain sources of misery such as precarious uh, and exploitative employment may well be a happier one but we won't get there by making this single often fleeting emotion the overarching goal okay so yeah so that was the last paragraph now let me explain each and every line of the paragraph to you one by one it says uh, happiness becomes a personal project right as a result of all that he has talked uh, all that he has already mentioned in the early part of the passage he says that happiness becomes a personal project now that each of us must now work on like going to the gym okay also since 1970s depression depression uh, has come to be viewed as a cognitive or neurological defect in the individual right so it has been it has come to be viewed as a cognitive or neurological defect in the individual and not uh not a cause uh, or uh, not a cause of or cause or consequence sorry not a cause not a consequence of circumstances right so 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 the view has changed with respect to this depression since the 1970s that it is something that is caused due to a neurological defect in the individual and and and, and the circumstances are not to be blamed for it, for it right it's basically the individual who is to be blamed for the same and then all of this all of this all of this together uh simply escalates simply escalates the sense of responsibility sor guys here stands for sense of responsibility sense of responsibility each of us feels each of us feels for our own feelings and with it and with the sense of responsibilities uh the sense of failure sof, SOF is sense of failure uh, when things go wrong when things go badly a society that deliberately removes certain sources of misery a society that deliberately removes certain sources of misery such as precarious employment and exploitative employment precarious basically by the word precarious means something that is uncertain right something that is uh, like precarious employment means employment where your where your job is not secure right so it is uncertain so for for a society that removed uh, sources of certain sources of misery such as certain sources of misery such as precarious employment or exploitative employment that society may well be happier may well be a happier one because it has done that yes but we won't get there but we won't get to this position of being a happy society by making this single often fleeting emotion which emotion is he talking about he's talking about happiness by making this single single often fleeting hope emotion of happiness the overarching goal okay so what he means to say here is that happy happiness the positive emotion is just an indicator that things have gone well okay and but and cannot be necessarily taken as an overarching goal that one should strive for okay so that's your passage explanation guys okay let's move on to the central idea now
okay guys so coming to the central idea it can be encapsulated uh, with the uh, using the following x sentence or paragraph okay so let me read it for you the trends of measuring and optimizing positive emotions for ulterior motives driven in part by developments in science and technology might have detrimental effects on individuals happiness can be a useful indicator of progress but won't serve as effectively when taken as an overarching objective okay so i'll just explain the, the whole uh, paragraph to you he says so, so see see so at the end of the day what the author wants to convey here is that the trends the, the things uh, the, the the trends of measuring and optimizing positive emotions for ulterior motives such as uh, shaping the global economy and uh, uh, you know profit making motives of business uh, which are driven these trends which are uh, driven in part by de developments in science and technology these trends might have detrimental effects on the individuals that's what he essentially wants to say right even though that towards the end of the uh, past he has said that and he finally also makes a statement uh, that happiness can be a useful indicator of progress in the last line of the paragraph the last sentence he has said that right can be a very uh, useful indicator of progress but won't serve as effectively as it is an indicator it might serve as a good indicator but it won't serve as effectively when it is taken as an overarching objective okay so that guys in my opinion is uh, the central idea of the passage okay uh, all right so and with that uh, we have come to an end of the first paragraph uh, of the of the first uh, part sorry of the first part of the session uh, now what you can do is uh, you can uh, you can use this card uh, here you can click on this card here that will take you to the second part of the passage and uh, or you can and uh, if for those of you who have not watched the intro video of the uh, course you can click on this card it will take you to the intro video and yeah so that's about it i'll see you in the questions discussion part okay thank you